Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I am going to discuss about authorization in ASP.NET Core, specifically role based authorization. For authorization to work, the prerequisite is an identity and for the identity the user needs to be authenticated first. In my last video I have discussed about authentication. I'll provide the link above for you to go through it. Now in previous video I did a custom authentication handler. In the video for the custom authentication handler when I created a generic principal class I left the roles as null. So the first step for our role based authentication is going to be enabling the roles here. Now before we do that, let's consider we have an inventory system for an e-commerce platform. And that inventory system is managed by an inventory controller. And the inventory controller has two methods for simplicity, just one get and a post. And the get method of course returns all the inventory and the post method is used for creating a new inventory. And let's say the post method can be accessed only by administrator role or a user with administrator role whereas the get method can be accessed by a user with a user role or administrator role. Now let's first create the controller. Now from the controller I am going to get rid of the method which are not required. Okay, now to have the authorization based on role, we can use the authorize attribute and I'm going to use it here. And for the get method, we are going to provide both administrator as well as user to have this access. So we provided the comma separated list for both administrator and user. And for the post, we'll give only administrator access to this method. Now at this point, let me also change the object here. And let's have an inventory object. Let me create a file for it. I'm going to keep it empty for now. Okay, next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to authentication handler. Now for this role to come here, we need to know what is the role associated to the user who has been authenticated, which is the, right now we are just getting the validated token. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the custom authentication manager who is mainly responsible for creating the token and I'm going to update here. So for here, if you see that this currently takes a I dictionary, the user is nothing but a in-memory dictionary of user ID password. But instead of that, I'm going to change it to a I list of user object. And then I'm going to define the user object the user object is going to, so I'm going to create a new type, user. The user object is going to have three properties. Username, password, and the role of the user. So let's say the user test one has the role of administrator and the user test two has the role of user. So now that I have changed it, I'm going to go ahead and change here as well. So after doing that, the next thing to do is the way 
custom authentication handler finds out about the token is from this tokens property which is exposed from the custom authentication manager. So I'm going to change this. So apart from having the token and a mapping of the username, I'm going to have token as well as the queue will still remain token. But for the value, instead of having just the username, I'll have the username as well as the role of the user. So I'm going to just change it to a simple tuple. And at this point, I am going to get the user object from the user list and then get the role property from that. So I'm going to get the first user out of the list and then dot role, which will give me the role of the user. Now that both username and role are available in the dictionary, I'm going to go back to the custom authentication handler and there are a couple of things I have to do. Yes, first of course I have to add the roles here and for that, let me first get rid of this. And here I can do a new array and I have to change the interface. Okay, now if I do value dot item two, that's the role. And here for the name is going to be the item one. Okay, the next thing I have to do is I have to add another claim. And this time the claim type will be role. And I'm going to pass the role here. Which is in the item two of the tuple. So now that these changes are done, the role of the user should be accessible from the internal implementation of the authorized attribute. So to test that, first let me create, let me go here, let me have a authentication. So I'm going to go here. In the header, I'm going to provide the content type. And then in the body, I'm going to provide the username and password of the user one who is has an administrator role. I have to I have to run it and it's probably going to run a different port I have to change that so I'll go ahead and change the port number and run this oh the username is test one good it's working so let's yeah so here I get the token now after I get the token what I'm going to do is I'm going to and remember this is the token of the u test one user who has an administrator role. So now I'm going to try to access the inventory API and I'm going to try to do a get, simple get. And for the authentication token, I'm going to pass this token. So in the headers, I'll have content type. I'll have authorization header. And I'm going to pass the GUID and make a call. I have to 
remove this and I can see the values which are the default values of the method they are being returned now I'm going to make a post on the same URL so let me just copy this make a post call let's copy this And in the body, I'm just going to pass a empty JSON. Let's make a post call. And we can see it is 200, okay. It's not doing anything right now because I don't have any implementation. But it's able to call and it's sending 200. Now let's do the same thing for test two, who has a user role. And at this point in time, this particular user with this new auth token that will generate with this new auth token should be able to access only the get method and for the post it should get a forbidden error so let's try it out so yeah the get is working as expected and now let's go to the post and you can see the post is returning back a 403 forbidden so the implementation is working as expected and as you can see it's a very simple implementation I just extended on the last video that I had in authentication I just added the role property to my in-memory list which can be a data store as well as I mentioned in my last video also and then here we're exposing the already created token instead of just exposing the username I'm exposing the username as well as the role and then I'm going to the custom authentication handler and here I'm adding a new claim of type role and providing the role here as well as I'm updating the generic principle to provide the roles here and then I created this inventory controller where I added the authorized attribute with different role and based on the role it is either able to access the endpoint or the HTTP verb or it is not able to and we can see it in the postman clearly so that's all I had to cover today thank you so much for watching the video if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and if you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and let me know if you want me to cover something or if you have any suggestion for my next video or how to improve the quality of the videos. Thank you.